record. Right. I can't see the little record, but I think it should be good to go. Alrighty then. Let's get started. Alrighty, so welcome everyone. Oops, wrong slide. <laughs> um, welcome everyone. I'm Georgia Kay. I am a junior history major at Agnes Scott, and I'm also a career peer with the Office of Internship and Career Development. And today I'll be giving this presentation on how to share your experiences in a succinct and meaningful way. So let's get started. Um, okay. So we've all been there. You get the question, tell me about yourself. What are you doing in school? What kind of projects are you working on? What are your future goals? Why did you choose the path that you're on basically? And these questions can be very, very nerve wracking. We all, them. we all think to ourselves like, what does this person want to know? So I would love if you guys actually share, when you get these type of questions, what do you think the person is asking you? What type of topics do you think they want you to talk about? So I'll just give you like a few seconds to type in the chat what you think that person is asking. Career goals. Any other ideas? Okay, yes. Something about what we aspire and how we plan to get there. So those are some really good guesses. And that is definitely a part of what they're asking you. They're wanting to know where, what are your goals? What are you trying to do? But most importantly, they're as also asking you about your past, which is very important. So Tell me about yourself and <laughs> welcome for everyone who's coming in, by the way, um, what your interest and how you impact the world. Okay, yes. So those are all really good answers and they really do get into a part of what we're going to be talking today, which is your results. Like, what are you trying to accomplish? Because that's a very important component. But usually when they're asking you to tell them a little bit about yourself, they wanted to know about your past, actually. They want to know about what is the journey that you took to get to where you are, which is like talking to that person, communicating with that person, whether it be an interviewer, whether it be someone you met at a networking event, they're really just trying to get to what are the important steps that you took that led you to meeting that person and what is relevant for them to know. So the question can really be reformulated to say, tell me how you got here. Also, tell me why I should want more about you, which is essentially just saying it's a conversation. Here. Oh. Someone's unmuted, but welcome everyone. Um, so it's saying it's a conversation starter. So it's asking you to tell them something that could carry on a conversation. So something that's interesting, something that's unique. They're not really asking you to say something generic, like I'm a good communicator. They're not really asking you to be very prescriptive about the way you talk about yourself. So you're not supposed to be like, I'm one of the best people in the world. And I just like love doing this thing. You really want to say I have done this, this, and this, and this had led me to this position of wanting to work with you, to this position of speaking to you today. So, next point. All right, so we've heard some very interesting ways of how you can kind of tackle that question of talking about yourself. There's a bunch of different ideas about how you can do this. So in storytelling, they have this formula of you have a setting. So where did it happen? You're really setting the context for what you're going to be talking about. If you don't set the context, when you get into the plot, it can be very confusing for the person you're communicating with to understand. And then the conflict. Conflict is natural. Conflict always happens. It doesn't always have to be something negative, but it could just be a lesson learned or hurdle to overcome. And when you describe the conflict, you're really just describing what are the steps that you're going to take to, res to resolve that conflict, which is the resolution. What happens in the end? There's always some sort of a natural end to things. Even if it isn't like very definitive, it could be a to be continued or a lesson learned or 
uh, we'll see in the future, but you always want to have some sort of natural end result when you're storytelling. And then in business, there's also a formula that they use when you're talking about marketing and when you're talking about selling yourself to people, which is essentially what you do when you're talking to people. You're trying to sell yourself, which means you're being hyper specific about what about you is compelling to that other person. So you're saying, why? Why do you do the things that you do? What is the larger mission that pushes you to complete the tasks that you do to apply for the roles that you do? And then how? Those are the actual tasks that you do. Those are the roles you compete for. Those are the things you've accomplished. So what is the end product? That is what you want it to be. It's the end goal. It is the ultimate mission and vision of what you're doing. So your why, your how connects to your what, which is your end mission. That doesn't have to be quantifiable, but it should be specific. Okay. All right. So we're going to be talking about SAR, which is the professional development term that we use when we're talking about how to describe your, yourself, how to describe what you've done to potential interviewers or recruiters. So SAR basically stands for Situation, Action, Result. And actually it was originally STAR, but then action and task are kind of like compatible. So you might've heard the STAR, you might've heard um, the STAR acronym before, but it mostly right now we use STAR, which is situation, action, and result. And welcome for all the people who just came in. Okay, so SAR to the rescue. What is SAR? SAR is a technique that helps you to answer interview questions and it can be used in a variety of different ways. It can be used for your cover letter, it can be used for your resume, and it also can be used for situational, in situational interview questions specifically. Um, yeah, so it's basically just a format that you can take any experience that you have but really use it in a compelling way to get to the point of what you're trying to communicate to that person who you want to work with, that person who you want to collaborate with. All right, now we've all probably heard some variation of SAR and we kind of know what it stands for, but I find that what's really difficult is finding what is the situation, what is the action, and what is the result. It can be kind of hard to define and we can sometimes get it muddled up. So the situation basically is your context. It's your story setting. So you have a natural start to something. It's usually some sort of declarative statement. So it's like, I'm a senior at Agnes Scott College. I'm a social media, social media manager for the Agnes Scott Public Health Club. I'm a volunteer, things like that. Things like that is really just going to show someone, okay, make your tasks make more sense. So if you just say that I, I make social media content, it doesn't really, it can be kind of confusing if you don't set up the context for why you do that. And the context is really gonna be informative of the type of results that you have. So you really wanna make sure that the context is very clear. So pick the role that's relevant to the task that you're gonna talk about. And you really wanna make sure you lead with that. So it could be, as I said, your college, your location, your major company and projects that you've been handed, so yes. And now into action. Action is a very, very important step, but it also can be a step that a lot of us stop at. But it's essentially the step that describes what you did. So you have your role, you know what your role is, you're a student. But then, of course, as a student, you get handed tasks that you have to do, whether that's complete a project, work on a presentation. And to describe that is kind of easy because it's the thing that you're doing, like it's a verb, it's an action. Um, but then it's not the result. So actions can be described as things like, I did research, I created social media posts, I tutored. It usually involves some sort of verb. So it's some sort of action word. Okay. And then lastly, we're gonna be talking about results, which is the part that a lot of people just don't get to, which is really sad, because that's the whole reason you're setting up. Like you're really just thinking of laying foundational bricks. So you're setting the context of what you do, you're describing to them what you do, which is the actions that you take, but then the results are like, why you're doing all those things. You're doing an action in service of a larger goal, which could be to learn something new, to do a project, or even to maybe elevate in your career or something like that. So when you talk about results, you're saying things like, 
I completed a 15 page research paper or I increased the number of followers on the account by 50 people or I created a math lesson for 10 students. Those are tangible results, results that you can show someone and you can show them, they can see your skills, they can see your competencies and they can see what your experience is. And that's really important to con convey to an employer because they're looking for someone who can do things. And how do you know someone can do things? Because they have past results to show for it. Okay, so that was a lot. <laughs> so we're going to go into a little bit of practice. So this practice is really going to help us to understand what is our situation, what is the action, what is the result? Like, how can we look in our own, in our own lives and our own experiences to understand what should we lead with and what should we end with? So we're going to step outside of ourselves for a little bit because I know it can be hard when you're thinking of your own life because you just feel like there's so much to talk about. And we're going to pretend that we are a pastry chef. So in this example, you're a pastry chef and you say, hi, my name is pastry chef extraordinaire. And these are some important things to know about me. So you currently work at Delicious Pastries. You are located in Kansas, in Kansas, not Kansas. <laughs> um, you have over, you have baked over 60 types of desserts. You have been a chef since 2012 and you want to open your own bakery someday. So kind of think about those. These are the facts that we're just brainstorming about ourselves. Okay, now we're gonna start to think about which one of these are situations, what is the action and what is the result? So we're gonna go through each bullet point and you guys, um, you can unmute yourselves or you can write in the chat um, what each bullet point is. So I'll just, I'll say the bullet point and I'll give you guys a minute or two to say what you think it is. So the first bullet point is you currently work at Delicious Treats. Is that a situation? Is that the context? So that's what you need to know to understand her future goals, to understand the type of actions she does, or is it an action? Is, she, is this some sort of verb? Or is it the result? So I'm gonna give you guys a few, a minute to type in the chat or unmute yourself. So I'm seeing situation, action, situation. Action. Situation. So let a few more people type, but so far it seems like we're split between situation and action. Okay. okay, so for that one, it is a situation. So when we think about situation, we're thinking about context. So basically, the foundation of what she's talking about, knowing how to bake six, 60 types of desserts, you know, wanting to open a bakery someday, that's all the context for that is that she's currently a chef and she works at this Delicious Streets bakery. And how we can know that that's a situation is because it's a declarative statement. So it's like, I go to Agnes Scott, I work here, I volunteer here. While those do have verbs in them, they're really just saying, this is what I do, this is what I am. So if you think about, for some of us who've done like grammar, you're thinking about things like, this is what I am and not what I do, even though it is what you do, but I hope you understand. So it is what you are. And that can change, but it's more so of a long-term thing. Um, okay, so this short one, you're from Kansas. Situation, action, or results? Okay, great. Yes, this is the situation. You're from Kansas, that's been informed a part of your identity. It's a declarative statement, I'm from Kansas. <laughs> so, okay, the next one is, you know how to bake over 60 types of desserts and you specialize in Belgian pastries. This one can be difficult. Um, is it a situation, action, or result?
Hmm. Okay. I see results. Any more guesses? Action situation. Okay. So it seems like we're a little bit split on this, which is kind of, you know, it makes sense because it is kind of a little bit confusing. But knowing how to do something, like this is the type of thing that she would do for her job, which is faking. So this is an action, like learning a new skill, the things that you are in progress of doing, like learning how to specialize in something, she knows how to make 60 types of desserts. Well, knowing how to make 60 types of desserts is a result. The fact that it's something that she's specializing in and it's something that she's perfecting means that it's some sort of action. So, but of course it can also be a result. The thing is these things aren't there. It isn't a science, but it's really like what you, where you put it. So it would be somewhere, somewhere at the end of your statement because it's gonna lead into a natural conversation about maybe why you chose to specialize in Belgian bakery, in Belgian pastries, maybe why you chose to learn so many different recipes. So it could be action or result, but it's somewhere at the end of, of your statement. And that I put that one in there specifically to show you that it, you don't have to overthink it. Like you just need to know what is the natural flow of what I'm saying and where should I put the different parts of what I talk about so that it makes sense to the person that I'm communicating with. So yes, you guys were right. It is an action. And okay. Um, so we're going to go through the next two ones a little bit faster. Uh, you have been a chef since 2012. Situation, action, or result? Any guesses? Been a chef since 2012. Okay. All right. So if there's no guesses for this one. That is situation. Um, it's context. It's just setting up what she's going to be talking about, which is ultimately leading to her future goals. Oh, no. Okay. Um, I'm seeing that some people are saying the audio is cut cutting in and out. Um, is it still doing that? Can someone let me know? Yes. Freezing a bit. Okay, I'm so sorry, everyone. I think my Wi Fi might be acting up. Okay, Laura says that she can hear me now. Um, can everyone else hear me? Okay, good. Okay, great. Yes, I'm so sorry about that. I think my internet is acting up. Um, okay, I'll just keep going and you guys can let me know if I need to stop if it's cutting in and out. Okay, yes. So um, if for those who didn't hear, I said that I have, have been a chef since 2012 is, oh, Don is here. Um, have been a chef since 2012 is a situation. So for those who didn't hear that. And then lastly, we wanna say once in their own bakery someday. Hi, Dawn. Oh, hi. <laughs> Sorry. I just had heard from a student they were having trouble getting in, so I was testing. So just ignore me. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> so sorry. That's okay. Um, so wants to open their own bakery someday. Is that a situation, action, or result? Okay, great. Yes, you are all correct. It is a result because she's doing all of this in service of this larger goal. All right. 
So now that we've kind of gone over that, I know it can be a little bit disjuncted. So we'll kind of see how do you put this into a statement? Like, you know, the situation, you know, the action, you know, the results. So you know that it should happen in some sort of chronological order where you set the context, you talk about the action, and you're going to describe why you do those things in service of a larger goal. And this is how you would do that. So you would say, my name is pastry chef extraordinaire and I have been a pastry chef since 2012. I currently work at pastry, I currently work at Delicious Pastries in Kansas. And that's your opening statement. It's a declarative statement. It's telling you, telling the person who you are and what you, and not what you do, but basically what you do. And so the next statement is, as a pastry chef, I'm in charge of making a variety of pastries, but I particularly love Belgian pastries. That is the action. As a chef, you make pastries. And then over the past eight years, I have made over six, made over 60 varieties of pastries, and I hope to open my own bakery one day dedicated to celebrating Belgian pastries. So that is your result. You have learned how to make a variety of pastries. That's the result so that you can get to your ultimate result of owning your own bakery someday. So I hope that makes sense, but this is just a very short statement. It's under a minute, but it's very compelling because it can lead into a conversation about a, a myriad of things, whether that be your eight years of experience or the amount of things that you have learned how to make. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. Now we're going to go into the different ways that you can use SAR in your professional communication. So you have Cover letters, you can use SAR for your cover letters, you can use it for your resume, and you can use it for your interview questions. All right, we're gonna go into how specifically you can use it for each of these things. So for your interview, you it's very simple for your interview because it's how you talk. So you're gonna be saying the situation, which is explain what's going on, explain what, explain why you are working at that place or volunteering and kind of like, that's your start point. So you're picking one to two experiences that you can say are relevant to the person that you're talking to. And then your action. Your action is what you were responsible for. So it's your job description. So it's gonna say you had to answer calls, you had to work on a specific project, but you always, always, always wanna make sure that you get into the result, which is, it says situation there, but it means results. Um, <laughs> the result is, what did you accomplish? So if you were answering calls, you wanna make sure that you talked about why were you answering the, those calls? Was it to make sure that a project ran successfully or was it to make sure that people could be scheduled to do a certain thing? Like you always wanna say, what were you doing those tasks in service of? That is the missing piece that we always tend to forget. And yes, focus on your why. In your interview question, it can be very easy to pick examples that maybe don't, aren't completely relevant, but we can't seem to think of what to say. It's very important to be prepared. Think about why did you do the type of things that you do, even if they weren't necessarily fitting with 100% of your ultimate goal, they should have taught you something. They should have been able to have some sort of tangible result. Even if that result is small, it's still something. And you wanna make sure everything you say has some sort of meaning. It isn't, you're not just saying it to say it, basically. And then for your resume, this can be used for your resume, and that's something that a lot of people don't know, but when you're, when you're thinking about it for your resume, and specifically in bullet point format, you're thinking of what is your job description? So that's your first bullet point. What is your job description? An example is you support the marketing manager in, co in collecting customer feedback on a pilot product. So that could be one bullet point. And then the next bullet point could be the action. So what steps did you take to fulfill that role? And that could be contacted and surveyed over 50 participants within the Metro Atlanta area. So what steps did you take to fulfill that role? And then next you go into your results. So how would your job be different if you were not there or if you did not do the things that you did? You always wanna think about, if I was not here, what would be different? So think about how you contributed, how you helped someone, what type of feedback you got from the people you're collaborating with. Those are all important things to add. So in this example, it says, composed a 15 page report on market research findings. So that's 
that person's contribution to that marketing project is that they made a report about it, which is specific to them. So yeah, so that's just the way that you can use it for your bullet point. And just to clarify, you don't have to do it in chronological order like this. It makes sense when you're talking about your interview, but you just wanna make sure that you do have these three things in your bullet point. What you did, like what was the role you were hired for, what the tasks you completed, and what were the results. So you can kind of put it in whatever way feels comfortable, comfortable to you, but you wanna make sure you have all those three elements. Okay, and then lastly, you're talking about your cover letter. So your cover letter is kind of like how you would structure your interview because you want it to feel compelling. You want the person who's reading it to understand how can you help them? How are you a good fit for their company? So for the introduction, you want to set the context. You want to list two to three relevant roles that you've completed. And yes, you want to list two to three relevant roles that you've completed from the get-go so they know you know, what skills you're going to talk about, what things you're going to highlight based on those roles that are relevant to that position. And then for paragraph one and two, you can talk about the actions you completed. And you want to make sure you talk about actions and not the end result yet, because the actions are going to paint what you did and they're going to show your skills. So you don't want to say, I'm a great communicator. I, I am great at teamwork. You want to show the actions that you did to communicate those things. And then lastly, focus on your results. At the end, it's for your cover letter, the results are kind of different, but you're gonna be talking about what did you learn? What did you learn from the things that you did? Because you already described the actions and those actions are gonna tell them what your skills are, but what did you learn? Like from this position coming into a new one, what do you hope to learn? So at the end, you wanna wrap it up with what have you learned? What do you hope to learn? And that's a nice little ending to your last paragraph in your cover letter and focus on how you can help. Remember when you're writing a cover letter, you are inquiring to this person that you would be a good fit for what they need. So whatever you're talking about, setting the situation, action and result is all tailored to what that person needs and what you have to offer. Okay, so we're coming to the end, but we're gonna talk about some common mistakes and then you guys can ask questions. So, some common mistakes are including too many things. I know we all get a little bit overexcited or I guess nervous and we start to include everything that we've done since high school, since elementary school, but that's not really the case. Like you really do want to pick like two to three maximum things that you want to talk about, whether that be in your cover letter or in your interview. You never want to talk about too many things because it can distract from the main point of what you're trying to say. And then the next one is not preparing. So this is something that we all kind of get caught with. We know we're going to get and we know we're going to get asked these questions, but when it comes to preparing for them, we sometimes forget or we don't do it in the right way. But in preparing, you need to know what experiences do you have and what is that person looking for? The person who you're communicating with, what did they need from you? And you need to make sure that those things overlap in some sort of way. And then the next one is being too rehearsed. So if you are nervous about it, you do want to make sure that you have the points that you need, but you don't want to write everything word for word because it can make you feel some sort of stuffy and like you aren't being compelling or genuine. So you want to make sure that you have just enough to know what points to cover, but not enough so that you're like reading a script. And then this one is all too common, which is thinking that your actions are results. They are not. If you had, if you were tasked to do something, it does not, it does not infer that you did that well. Like you think it does, but it doesn't always. So you want to make sure you explicitly state what was the end result? How was this successful? And if it wasn't successful, you need to make sure you're saying why you learned from that or whatever is the case. And then lastly, forcing a situation to fit. And this kind of goes with not being prepared. So like if you feel like you were caught off guard and you can't think of a specific instance, so you try to make something work, like if someone asks you to describe a challenge and you're like, oh, I can't think of a challenge, so I'm just gonna think about this time that I worked in a group. It wasn't that bad, but I'm gonna make it work. Um, in situations like that, there's two ways to go about it, which is to just let the person know that you don't have an instance for that specific um, question, but you do have something that could illustrate something different. So whether that be they ask you about 
a challenge, you can say, well, I can let you know when I had a challenge in a different situation if it wasn't within a group situation or if something is slightly different, it is okay to say that. You know, you can say it for a different situation. And yes, also when it comes to forcing a situation to fit, it's just making sure that you know what they're trying to ask you. So if they're asking about a challenge, they're asking about how do you work with people, they're asking about your problem solving skills. So if you know the basis of what they're trying to get at, you can answer that question in a way that actually fits. So yes, so that's basically the end of the presentation, but I'm sure you all have questions. So you can type your question in the chat or you can unmute yourself. Oh, thank you, Laura. Does anyone have any questions about how to use STAR or just general tips about when you're speaking to people? Also, you can ask if something that I said wasn't clear. No question. Oh, yes. So this presentation was recorded. So I think you can email Don or Irene from the internship office and they should be able to send it to you. I don't know if they're going to send everyone who RSVP'd a video link, but if you specifically want one after this, you can email them. You're welcome, Chloe. Okay, so if no one has any questions, I'm just gonna end on some points of that. When you're talking to someone, you're really just trying to think about the overlap of what do they want, what do you want, and making sure that that is compatible. And that's essentially the purpose of SAR, is that you're explaining to them what is it that they should know in order to know that you're a good fit or that you have common values or common things, just things in common. So. Thank you all for attending this presentation. It was amazing. And if you want um, a link to this presentation, you can email Irene or Dawn. And I hope you all have a great day. Oh, thank you, Brianna.